Alright, evening folks, a lot of rain out there. Wow, well, look at this. This is Jeff from RV Diagnostics in the garage. Look at this. There ain't an RV in here. I actually had my little Honda in here, Civic. I had to put a new muffler on it. I was like, oh my god, I get to work on my stuff. So, there's some of my tools, right? I'm slowly modifying it. Uh, there's my brooms and my wash. There's some uh, 50 amp, 30 amp service water. Eventually I'm going to run a water pipe into here instead of from all the way over there. All right. That generator's going outside, get hooked into the house eventually. Um, that side of that, pretty empty. There's a bathroom right there. All right. Eventually, I'd like to put a shower right in there, but we'll get there. Got one in my RV. What we're going to go over is a Magnum Energy Inverter, what we call the black box or the gray. It's a modified square wave. Uh, I'll show you some. These screws here are Torx. You got a hole, and how they come off, basically, you need these two Torx here. One is a, a T25. And one is a T15. So that took that cover off. You say, hey, what model is it? I'm going to say, hey, here you go. I'm going to show you. It's an ME. Twenty twelve, two thousand watts, continuous output voltage. There you go, twelve point six volt in input. Now continuous chargers, hundred amps DC, eleven to fourteen volts. That's pretty good. Notice the difference. Charging hundred amps, fifty amps AC amp. So it's all right. Peak current thirty amps, ten second surge. DC input 10 to 15, continuous input current 190 amps at 12. It takes more amps to make AC than AC to make DC. Alright, so here we go. We had to take these uh, right here off. That's why I was showing you the torques. And they go right above these, MOS, these MOSFETs. So this takes the battery DC in right here. All right, and that's your negative. This is your positive. And what you're going to see is something very alarming. Let me put you on hold and go get a flashlight. All right, so we're back. Now notice this side. All right, that's a MOSFET, metal oxide semiconductor field effective transistor. Notice this fan right here is on this side. This fan is on this side. So what happened was the fan stopped working. And it burned up. You see it. See them down in there? Let me get this under there a little bit better. Burned up the field effective transistors. That switches. So one time this one will switch negative. This one will switch positive. Then this one will switch negative. The second one will switch positive. They're negative and positive gates. All right. So that just will give you a little bit of hint there. So what, I'm, what it is... I'm going to question you about is you might hear the fan running, but is there enough fan? Is there two of them in there blowing? And the other one is usually where you keep these is a closed up box area. So I try to modify my customers and members that stop by. Um, I put like an air filter in the bottom of the storage area and a little 12 volt fan on top. So it pulls fresh air in all the time to stop that from overheat. One, I change these fans out every three or four years because they do go. And you can look in there and almost see the fans if you shine a flashlight and see if they're moving. All right, see there's my finger in there, right? And then there's my, there's my finger in there again, see it? So this fan right here over, stopped working and overheated that, or the fan dryer. All right, so what I'm gonna do is take out the switching board all right so basically you pull this one up all right it was held down by little screws right there and I got a whole bag of them right here see I've been keeping them in here 
T15, T20s, 25s. All right, so next I'm taking this off. This positive come off, this negative come off, and then this panel right here. All right. All right, so let me put you on hold and I'll get that done. All right, so we took that bolt off, that bolt, and basically they are 11 millimeters. All right, and then this screw holds that down. And the other two screws were right there, which held the cable board, the input, where you have your, uh... let me put you on pause here real quick. All right, so underneath it is a heat sink tape. All right, get rid of that heat. That's what them fins are there for right there. And as you notice, right there, a bunch of MOSFETs just took a dump. Switching transistors, okay? Yep. You can kind of see where that one capacitor bit the dust too, right there. This is called surface mounted technology. Well, I have the uh, solder and gun for here somewhere. It's like a little extreme heat blow dryer. Notice each side has the same type of chips. It's just a switching control. All right, and these are your two fan controls. All right, and that's where your connect board goes on. All right, so I don't know what to tell you. To the next time, you got a big old transformer there. That's where most of the weight is right there. That's your pass-through relay, and then that's your ground coupling relay right there. Because when you're hooked to 120 source from this, you need to be your ground and your neutral ground bonding right there. So that's your pass through. All right. And of course, you know, you got your different cables, you got your stack, you got your communication, you got your battery temperature sensor, a couple different things, all right. Well, that's this fit right now. Just going over some stuff, showed you that. So please folks, check your fans, look up in there when they come on. If you see only one coming on, that's usually not good. Usually not. This is what happens. They burn up. Uh, this wasn't cheap for the gentleman. And I got like a couple over there. There's two more right there. I got to fix. I just basically fix them if somebody's in a jam. I either give them a good price on it or, you know, jack it up to $10 million so I can retire quicker. Uh, that's, that's funny right there. All right. So... I'm tired, beat. Um, I had to put a muffler on my car, so that kicked my butt. 11. Okay. Well, here's, there's my girl. Yeah, she's English Black Lab, 70 pounds. She's coming out of heat. Um, it's a real good dog, though. Storm. Storm. What are you doing? Where's the kitty? Where's the kitty at? Oh, there they all are. Look. Well, not all of them, but they're on the wood because the concrete's cold. One, two, three, four, five. Jeff's missing. Believe it or not, that's the mama kitty of that one, that one, that one, and that one. Yep, that's her first batch, them three. Then she had two, an orange tabby with that one. That one disappeared, the orange tabby. So that's her second batch, and she's fixed now. All right, folks, so thank you very much. It's Jeff from RV Diagnostics. We're just going over some inverters, converters, and I made a, a, a school time video on what they are. So this is a combination unit, inverter and converter. All right, what's an inverter? Takes battery voltage, 12, up to 48, depends which one you got, and inverts it to AC voltage that you can use for your hair dryer, coffee pot, microwave. CPAP machines. Um, the combi unit also has a converter. It takes 120 when you hook the shore line, shore power, pedestal, or generator, and makes a battery charger out of it. So definitely our 120 side is shot. You know, there you go. We burned up. All right. All right. So a couple different ways to get me. Jeff at RVDiagnostics.com. That's my email. Um, the other one is the Facebook page ever growing. It just hit 22,000 members. Thank you very much. That's RV Diagnostics and Troubleshooting. You can hear that rain, huh? 
and the other one is the website where you get my telephone number it's uh, www.rvdiagnostics.com uh, folks it's 118 a year I'm getting ready to jack it up to 150 that's 12 dollars and something a month that's still cheap to have an RV tech in your back pocket and there's hundreds of testimonial videos of how I've helped people save thousands three to five thousand dollars a year maintaining their RV fixing it repairing it troubleshooting it all right the other way to get home is this YouTube channel here subscribe hit the like put some comments down there hey you four-eyed you don't know what you're talking about or hey how about this and what have you seen this one guy had an interesting question it's called an in-frame slide Schwinn tech I guess he was having problems with it. he was wondering if he could do a slim rack system I would have to take some measurements, but uh, there is a little bit difference in the system. One has a floating rail track system, which is a slim rack. The other is fixed. All right, so there you go. So I was responding to that. Never done one of them, but I am going to put slides in my 99 Beaver. I got one. I'm going to put bedroom slides in. I'm going to put me a custom corner jacuzzi hot tub for my wife because she likes to take soaking baths. Right now we just got... Uh, a shower beautiful shower though, but um there you go so that's another project for me i got to fix something today for me <laughs> all right what's the motto of rv diagnostics you know it folks test not guess right i'd rather test something and learn how to test it and figure out hey it was working right and then find the problem keep looking for it but i learned something about the system i was troubleshooting the other one is Safe travels of me. You can't fire as burn bright till the next video or when I see you on the road at a campground or on the road. Thank you very much.